Hey everybody, how's it going? So in this episode of the podcast, I struggle with uh, telling you about this concept that I have called the compass, and I hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, uh, feel free to do so at atlanticradio.blogspot.com. And I know I haven't released one in over a month, but here it is. Bye. When I go online, I see a lot of arguments back and forth from the left and from the right. And both sides are convinced that their views on a topic are the correct perspective or that they have the right set of facts. And when I look at these arguments going back and forth, I remember this image that I have in my mind of a compass. Since both sides can't be correct about a particular issue, like one side has to be more correct than the other if they're opposing. How does anybody know, how do you know, how do they know that their view is the correct view, is truthful and factual and maybe even beneficial? I think that when it comes to truth, if you have a motivation, then that's a strong indication that your view on something in particular could be misguided. Because if you have a certain motivation, then you can't see things objectively. Now, who can see things objectively? Well, I don't think that it's a thing where you can be perfect with it, ever no matter how much you or I or anybody else would like to believe that that's the case. These minor arguments online lead me to think about something deeper, about that internal compass. You're all familiar with a compass, right? You use it to figure out where true north is. Now, what if your compass is faulty? What if it's not calibrated correctly? Then you'll be heading in true north, or what you think is true north, but it's actually leading you astray. Now, this internal compass concept is something that you can pay attention to, and this is a tool that you can use to measure how, how open to the truth you might be, or how far, how misguided you might be. You can also learn that from this. And this is a difficult thing to describe. I considered not talking about this altogether, but I feel so strongly about it that I decided that I'd like to put it out there. So the first step is you have to first calibrate your compass. If you don't calibrate your compass, you'll be running a race in the wrong direction. So how, how do you know that the race that you're running is in the right direction? That's the question. How do you know that what you're arguing or fighting for is the correct thing? I mean, you could be something like the CEO of a company, but you're actually in the wrong position in the world. It doesn't matter how successful you are at it. If you're in the wrong position in the world for who you truly are, then you're winning a race that you don't even really want to be a part of. And I think this is a condition that many of us have been in or are actively in right now. Now on a personal level, if you don't calibrate your compass, you're liable to fall victim to all sorts of things because you'll frantically be reaching for true north. You'll be more likely to look to things like astrology and tarot card readings, or your psychic friend, or your guru as the source of telling you what the right thing to do is. Now, these things aren't negative or misguiding in and of themselves. Like tarot cards, for example, they can serve as a pretty good mirror to see how you're feeling about something. 
But personally, I think the best way to witness your mind is one, either record yourself talking or two, which is uh, maybe a little bit less daunting is to write because when you write, you see what you're thinking. And then when you come back to it the next day or in a week, sometimes you're like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, that's, that's not, that doesn't work. That's not logical. And as a side note concerning our modern technology, people are posting to social media on a whim before they've thought something through. I'm guilty of it myself. I try not to do that. But sometimes things hit you in the gut and they're emotional and they prompt a response from you. So this internal compass, some people call it God, what I'm talking about. Some people call it God, some people call it the universe. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, really. But it's like that voice that tells you that you should do this or you should do that. And what I'm talking about here is how do you know that that voice is the right voice? You know, the uh, classic depiction of an angel and a devil on a person's shoulder, the angels telling them what to do and the devil's telling them what to do and they're arguing between each other. Well, you have to find what the angel represents because some people have a devil talking to them and they think that it's the angel and some people have an angel talking to them and they think that it's the devil and there's people whose devil on their shoulder is looking at other people's angel on their shoulder and accusing them of being the devil is that too convoluted I think you can follow me there I have faith in you <laughs> If not, uh, forgive me for my putting together of words there. So how does one go about calibrating the compass? In other words, how do you know you're running the race of your life, so to speak, in the right direction, that you're listening to the right voice? The only way that I have personal experience with on how to calibrate your compass and there's other ways out there. It's not the only way, I'm sure. But the way that I know is to... I'll just tell you how I calibrated my compass. I decided to start from the very beginning with everything. Religion, things that I learned in school, things that I learned from my parents, my physical posture, the culture that I was born into, my beliefs about what's right and wrong, etc etc and I took them one by one and analyzed them and asked myself where did I learn this and why do I believe this and is it even beneficial and here is a place where you have to be very meticulous because when you're analyzing all of these things some of which originated from your own best calculations and some that you don't know how it got there. It just seems to have always been there with you. The things that you don't know how they got there, those are the things that need to be evaluated and weeded out if need be. Because a parent or something within your environment, which may not always be healthy, taught it to you. You have to take a really long and strong look at all of this stuff because your idea of rebellion, your big f you to what you've learned could be misguided. You could be trying to throw something out that you should actually keep. And a way to be certain that something needs to be thrown out is if, the, if there's any vindictiveness attached to it. Like, for example, if you got fired from a job and you want to give a big middle finger to those people and you have images of yourself driving back there in a Ferrari to show them that you're valuable. If you got dumped by your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend and you're going to the gym because there's a part of you 
that wants to show them that you're desirable. That's a good indication that that object in your mind, that paradigm, that philosophy that you've built, that particular one needs to be thrown out because it's reactionary and it doesn't originate from you. Another one, your high school history teacher thought you would never get anywhere and you could be 35 and still carrying that around. That's right, Mr. Cohan. Fuck you. See, I made it. I made it. What do you got to say about that, huh? But I must say that the fuel that these things bring about isn't completely useless. It does get you places. Anger is a motivator, for sure. But it's a motivator that will almost certainly get you in the wrong race or running the race in the wrong direction. So you have to check for these things. So these things indicate that when it comes to constructing yourself, it has to be done when you're in a state of peace, when there's stillness. Otherwise, you won't be able to calibrate your compass to get you building in the right direction. Because it's difficult to tell which way is you when you're frantically wandering through the woods looking at your compass, all angry and vengeful. And if you have any of these, like a thirst for revenge, that's a perfect indicator that your life is not being led by your compass. You're reacting still to something that somebody did to you. I can easily say that this podcast itself is reactionary. It's a, a way to express myself while living in a society where I feel like I can't express these things to almost nobody. So like you may have heard me say during past podcast episodes that don't let perfection ruin a good thing. This is not about being perfect. There's no freedom from hypocrisy here. This isn't a venture of absolute perfection. I used to ride shotgun from time to time with an ex-girlfriend and she used to get really pissed off when people would cut her off on the road or do her some wrong on the highway or on the street. And I would hear about it for like the whole 30 minute trip, how that person, she would go on and on about it. I can't believe how stupid people are. Can you believe that? That mother did you see what he did? People like that need to get their head examined. It's obvious from looking at their car. Did you see their bumper? The car looked like crap. But I asked her one day, do you think that person that cut you off is thinking about you as much as you're thinking about them? She didn't exactly give me an answer, but I'll tell you what, she stopped letting random strangers whose face she hasn't even seen and they may, they may not have even known that she was there and they cut her off or didn't let her in the lane. And a stranger had completely, knowingly or unknowingly, taken over her life for 30 minutes or a half of a day. Now the car example, that's a tight circle of an example of how your compass can get miscalibrated. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody here my ex-girlfriend, she's a great person. Now, after you've become aware of your compass and you've methodically laid out a series of things that you want to take a look at, what are indicators that one of these mental objects is worth keeping? Well, if it's something that you're able to take responsibility for, that's a good indication that it's something you should keep and build on. So it can't be something like children dying in another country and you're unable to help them. Worrying about that in a, when you're in a position where you can't help them is not going to help them in any significant way. And worrying about things like that is not going to help whatever it is that is out of your scope of influence. When I spend too much time worrying about things that are out of my scope of influence, I feel bashful 
because I feel like I'm being recreationally miserable. Like if you can't pay your bills, dwelling on the fact that you can't pay them for too long isn't going to help you pay them any faster. But if you were to instead move your focus to a talent that you have or a talent that you can start, something that you can cultivate without paying attention to the bills at all, that would more even just consequentially be more useful in getting the bills paid. So you have to identify what everything means to you before you can make an accurate decision of which direction you want to go from here on out. As you're evaluating these mental objects, you have to ask yourself, well, is this true? Is it accurate? Is it beneficial? Is it good for you? Is it good for others? Does it have a positive effect on you? Can it have a positive effect on others? It doesn't matter what it is that you learned or who you learned it from. If it doesn't meet criteria like this, then you should discard that mental object. So after you started doing this, you don't have to wait until you go through the whole collection of your mental upbringing. After you've started doing this, you can now start to focus on what to do with it, what to do with this new knowing of yourself. And this is where you have to keep things close to home. It has to be something that you can take responsibility for, as I mentioned. From person to person, there's such a huge variety of things that can help you get your compass back on track that I can't really say exactly what it would be for you that you need to do. You know better than anybody what it is that you need to do or what ideas and beliefs you should keep and build on because they're true or because they're useful or because they make sense. Ultimately, you're the one that's going to have to make the decision of what means what. And in the end, when all is said and done, I'm sorry, baby, but you're going to have to save yourself. But don't be afraid of that because it's an exciting time. You've discovered things that you can actually influence. You've discovered ways that you can actually save yourself. Okay, you know what? I got to put the brakes on right here because I'm getting lost. And uh, <laughs> you know what? Let's just keep going. After you've become acutely aware of your compass and you started moving forward more in the right direction, the things that you work on will compound. And instead of being a poison tree the, whose leaves are falling and causing the tree to grow even bigger. It'll be a tree that you like, that is giving off fruit that is delicious. And even the fruits of this tree that you don't use will fall to the ground and turn into rich soil, which will help this beautiful tree to grow. And this is an ongoing thing. So when you look back at when you started calibrating your compass, you'll realize that you've made progress in a direction that's more wholesome. And this compass is very important because if somebody says to you, let's say you go to watch some uh, guru at a meditation session or something like that, that person can say something like to you like, uh, follow your heart. That's what people say. People say that a lot, right? Do what's in your heart, follow your heart. But if it's not calibrated and you, if your heart is clouded and in despair or full of jealousy or a thirst for revenge, you can get swept up by many things. Like I mentioned, astrology, metaphysics, some dude making a podcast because you're reaching for answers. And the voice that you'll be hearing, the voice that you'll be listening to, if it's not calibrated, is not the voice that is of the heart. 
but it's more like of the ego or something else, but it's not the heart or the voice of God or the universe. Call it what you like. It's not that. And if it's not the voice of your true compass, it could tell you to do something as noble as running for office, but you actually, actually helping people in your community is a guise and the truth underneath that is that you want to be respected, that you need to be great in the eyes of others about something. And not because this thing is in line with your true self, true self, as they say, but your motivations could be misplaced because you want to be recognized and awarded. That's how you get doctors because they wanted to become a doctor as opposed to a doctor who became a doctor because he wants to help people. When you find your true compass, and it's an ongoing process, but when you find your compass period and you start observing it and you start calibrating it, you'll start to recognize and acknowledge and respect and award yourself. You'll approve yourself. And life becomes more fun. And it doesn't have to be like it becomes more fun like you start traveling everywhere. Maybe that's what it is for you. You start traveling everywhere. But even just in your room by yourself, life becomes more interesting to you. Because now it's something and you're striving for and you're struggling for something that you want, that you've always wanted. And I think the most wonderful part about this is that what you'll want will be good automatically like goodness on automatic pilot because you'll have done what every great thinker and philosopher has done through analyzing and calibrating your compass hey i could use a compass calibration right now myself do I even know what the hell I'm talking about anymore? <laughs> yes, yes I do. But this is a little bit difficult for me. It's difficile. This kind of thing, what I'm talking about here, is really scary for people. Because essentially, it's freedom. If you were taught to never question such and such thing, guess what? You're questioning it. And that takes courage because you're potentially breaking away from the fundamental fiber that you were made from. And if you find that one of these belief paradigms that you've accumulated is actually not true, that can be really scary to many people because you'll be uprooting elements of your mind that you've made fundamental over time. There's a part of this that can get tiresome and that's the constant vigilance. But like working out, if you start working out on a daily basis, you get used to it. It becomes like a muscle that gets stronger. And the vigilant side is useful in instances like you could say to yourself, well, you know, eating Kentucky Fried Chicken every night makes me happy. But you know that there's that voice. It may be deeply hidden at the bottom of the trash can, covered in Kentucky Fried Chicken wrappers that is calling out. With a miscalibrated compass, you're likely to hurt many people along the way because you'll inadvertently be lying to other people because you're lying to yourself. And you know, this concept of the compass has been told throughout history in different ways. Like there's a Native American story about the story of two wolves, where one wolf is full of anger and jealousy and greed, and the other wolf is peaceful and compassionate and giving. And the question goes, which wolf wins? Whichever one you feed. But this concept of the compass is a tool for discerning which wolf is which. 